Hi, this is Matt Baker. Today I'm going to show you the family tree of Abraham Lincoln, the 16th President of the United States. On every ranking of the greatest U.S. presidents, you will find Abraham Lincoln somewhere near the top. If he's not at number one, he's probably number two or three. This is because he was the president during the U.S. Civil War, and as such, he helped to abolish slavery and to preserve the Union. So we'll be looking at his ancestors as well as his descendants, and as a bonus, some famous Hollywood stars that he's connected to. But first, a word from the former president himself. Four score and seven years ago, our ancestors dreamed that we would build our family tree and make fascinating discoveries about our family history. Well, Abe, thanks to today's sponsor, My Heritage, that dream can now come true. All you have to do is start building a simple tree using their easy to use website. Once you have just a few names on your chart, such as your grandparents, MyHeritage will automatically look for ways to grow your tree for you. It does this by comparing your tree to the trees made by other users and by giving you access to over 18 billion records, stuff like birth certificates, military records, and even photos. Just click any time you see a discovery box appear and watch your family tree grow. MyHeritage also has lots of fun tools, including the brand new AI Time Machine. Just upload some photos of yourself, and MyHeritage will show you what you would have looked like during several historical periods. Sound interesting? Well, you can try out MyHeritage right now by signing up for a 14-day free trial. After that, you'll get 50% off of a premium membership. Just click the link in the description or pinned comment. Okay, now back to Abraham Lincoln. The Lincoln family's history in America starts with a man named Samuel Lincoln, who was originally from Norfolk, England. However, in 1637, he and his older brother Thomas decided to pack up and move to the newly formed Massachusetts Bay Colony. They were Puritans and helped build the old ship church there which today is the oldest church building in the United States that has been continuously used as a church. By the time of the American Revolution, one of Samuel's great-great-grandsons had become a prominent lawyer in Massachusetts, Levi Lincoln Sr. Levi Sr. helped write the Massachusetts state constitution and worked on a court case that led to abolishing slavery in that state. He then served in the State House of Representatives and the State Senate before becoming the Attorney General of the United States under President Thomas Jefferson. Two of his sons went on to become prominent politicians as well. His son, Levi Lincoln Jr., serving as a U.S. congressman and the governor of Massachusetts, and his son, Enoch Lincoln, serving as a U.S. congressman and the governor of Maine. However, it is through a different line of the family that we get President Lincoln. If we go down five generations on that line, we come to Captain Abraham Lincoln, who was the namesake of the future president. He served as a military captain in Virginia during the American Revolution. However, after the war, he moved to Kentucky, which at the time was not yet a state and was still being settled by Americans. In fact, Captain Lincoln would have almost certainly known the famous folk hero, Daniel Boone. But after just five years on the frontier, Captain Lincoln was shot and killed by a Native American who was defending his territory against the white settlers. President Lincoln's father, Thomas, was just eight years old when this happened. And being that he was the youngest of three brothers, he ended up inheriting nothing of his father's large estate. Thomas also never learned to read or write and thus had to struggle to make a living. This is why the future president and his sister Sarah ended up being raised in poverty, famously living as children in a one-room log cabin. There was a third sibling as well named Thomas, but he died as an infant. So that takes care of Abraham Lincoln's father's side of the family. His mother's side is a bit more interesting because up until recently, there's been some mystery over his mother's parentage. 
His mother's name was Nancy Hanks, but she was also known as Nancy Sparrow because as a child, she was adopted by Thomas Sparrow and Elizabeth Hanks. As to who her biological parents were, there used to be two competing theories. One was that she was the daughter of Elizabeth's sister, Lucy Hanks, who later married Thomas's brother, Henry Sparrow, but who perhaps had given birth to Nancy illegitimately before she got married. The other theory is that Nancy was the legitimate daughter of Elizabeth and Lucy's brother, James Hanks, and his wife, Lucy Shipley. So either way, her mother's name was Lucy, and either way, she was the biological granddaughter of Anne Lee and Joseph Hanks. However, according to theory one, she's related to the Hanks on her mother's side, and according to theory two, she's related to the Hanks on her father's side. Due to modern DNA studies, we now know the answer to this puzzle. There are several women alive today who, without a doubt, can trace themselves all the way back to Anne Lee, following a strict female-to-female -female only line. This means that they all share the same mitochondrial DNA. So, as of 2015, we now know that Anne Lee belonged to the rare haplogroup called X1C. And a test of Abraham Lincoln's DNA, taken from blood from the chair he was leaning on when he got shot, has revealed that the president belonged to the rare group X1C as well. So that almost certainly means that theory one is correct. Now, if you're familiar with U.S. Civil War history, you may have noticed the last name Lee here, and might be wondering if there's any connection to the famous Confederate general, Robert Lee. Well, this too was a question that wasn't able to be answered until recently due to DNA technology. But we now know that the two men were not related. So basically, Anne Lee came from a different Lee family, not the famous Lee family that the general belonged to. Okay, let's now look at Abraham Lincoln's descendants. First of all, I should mention that Nancy Hanks actually died when Lincoln was just nine years old, shortly after the family moved to Indiana. The following year, his father remarried to a woman named Sarah Bush. So during Lincoln's teen years in Indiana, Sarah Bush was his stepmother. The family then moved to Illinois, which is where Lincoln eventually studied law and got involved in politics. At age 33, he married his wife, the future first lady, Mary Todd. Together, they had four children, all boys. However, only one survived childhood, the eldest, Robert Lincoln. Robert married Mary Harlan, daughter of James Harlan, who went on to serve as the Secretary of the Interior after Abraham Lincoln's assassination. Robert himself ended up in politics as well, serving as the U.S. Secretary of War under Presidents Garfield and Arthur, and then serving as the U.S. Ambassador to the U.K. He and his wife Mary had three children, who were thus President Lincoln's only grandchildren, all born after the assassination. Jack, however, who was formerly known as Abraham Lincoln II, died at age 17, and thus it was only Mammy and Jesse who carried the line forward. But before we look at them, let me share two interesting curiosities about Robert Lincoln. The first is that he almost died, one or two years before his father's assassination, when he slipped between a platform and a moving train, However, he was saved by a man named Edwin Booth. Now, if that name sounds familiar to you, it's because Edwin's brother, John Wilkes Booth, was the man who shot Abraham Lincoln. The other weird thing is, not only was he present during the aftermath of his father's assassination, he was also present at the next two presidential assassinations. He was an eyewitness when President Garfield was shot in 1881, and he was very nearby when President McKinley was shot in 1901. The only presidential assassination where he was not present was, of course, JFK's, which happened after his death. So Abraham Lincoln had only two grandchildren that reached adulthood, both females. Mammy married Charles Isham, and together they had only one son, Lincoln Isham, who in turn had no children of his own. 
although he did marry and have several stepchildren. Jesse married a baseball player named Warren Beckwith, and together they had two children, Mary and Robert. Mary, a lesbian, never married and did not have any children. She died in 1975, making her brother Robert the last living descendant of Abraham Lincoln. Robert married three times but had no children of his own, just stepchildren. And therefore, upon his death in 1985, the bloodline of Abraham Lincoln officially died out. However, there is still one mystery that hasn't been solved, which could mean that his bloodline does live on. Robert's second wife was Anne-Marie Hoffman. During the first year of their marriage, Anne-Marie gave birth to a son named Timothy. She claims that Robert was the father, but Robert was known to have had a vasectomy many years prior to Timothy's birth. So although he helped to raise Timothy, he did not claim to be his biological father. However, when Robert died, a settlement was made in which Timothy was given $1 million in exchange for giving up any future claims of being Robert's son. No DNA tests were done, though, so I guess we'll never know for sure. Okay, I want to conclude by showing you some fun connections between Abraham Lincoln and several big names in Hollywood. As I mentioned earlier, Lincoln's mother's name was Nancy Hanks. And of course, when most people hear the name Hanks, they think of this guy here, the popular actor Tom Hanks. Well, Tom Hanks is indeed related to Nancy Hanks, and thus to Abraham Lincoln as well. If we go up seven generations from Tom, we come to John Hanks Jr., who was the brother of Joseph Hanks, the grandfather of Nancy Hanks. So that makes Tom Hanks and Abraham Lincoln third cousins four times removed. Another famous person with the last name Hanks is Camille Hanks, wife of the now disgraced comedian Bill Cosby. She's the direct descendant of a man named Thomas Hanks, who, according to some sources, may have also been a brother of Joseph Hanks. However, the sources are not good ones, so I couldn't confirm that. There's also the fact that Camille Hanks is black, so I'm not sure if this shaky connection here is due to the fact that a white slave-owning male perhaps had a child with a black enslaved female, something that unfortunately happened quite frequently prior to emancipation. I'll be diving into this issue in greater detail later this year when I deal with the family tree of Thomas Jefferson. For now, if anyone knows more details about how Camille Cosby's line connects to the other members of the Hanks family, do let me know in the comments. It's possible that it has nothing to do with slavery at all. I just don't know. Finally, there's one more Hollywood connection that's even closer than the Tom Hanks one. So remember, Nancy Hanks was the illegitimate daughter of Lucy Hanks, and Lucy Hanks went on to marry Henry Sparrow. Well, she and Henry had several children, one of whom was named Mary Ann Sparrow. And Mary Ann Sparrow is the great, great, great grandmother of the famous actor George Clooney. So that makes Abraham Lincoln and George Clooney first half cousins five times removed. So that's kind of cool. Okay, so that was a look at the family tree of Abraham Lincoln. So far on this channel, we've covered Washington, Lincoln, Kennedy, Obama, Trump, and Biden. So there's many presidents that we have not yet looked at. So let me know in the comments which U.S. president you would like to see the family tree of next. And don't forget to check out My Heritage by clicking the link in the description or pinned comment. Thanks for watching.